Welcome to this installment of the T Acquisition Lab series on motor drivers. My name is Pablo Armen, and in this video, I'll be going over the best PCB layout guidelines for motor driver circuits. This training video will be broken down into several sections and will closely follow the best practices for board layout of motor drivers application report listed in the resources slide at the end of the presentation. First, I will discuss why following proper layout guidelines and having good PCB layout is important. Then, I will provide best practices to follow for optimizing PCB grounding, improving thermal performance of the board, how to choose and place vias, general routing techniques, bulk and bypass capacitor placement, and power stage routing and MOSFET placement. Let's begin by discussing why having a good PCB layout is extremely important, especially in motor driver applications. While there are many issues which can occur due to poor PCB layout, I will cover a few of the most common issues which can arise. Poor PCB layout can cause many issues such as poor thermal performance, which can lead to the motor driver and other components overheating and being potentially damaged. Another problem with bad PCB layout is the increase of capacitive and inductive coupling, which can degrade signal integrity and cause the circuit to not operate as intended. Increased common and differential noise is another issue caused by poor PCB layout. The following slide will present proper layout guidelines to follow to mitigate the issues presented in this slide. Implementing good grounding techniques is crucial to ensure a stable reference voltage is provided to the IC and its surrounding circuit components without noise and other oscillations. The two most common ground schemes are partition and grid. In a partition ground, the ground for the digital, analog, and high power signals are separated. This separation ensures that the noisy ground from the high power signals don't disrupt the sensitive digital and logic signals. In a grid ground scheme, the ground paths are continuous throughout the board to make sure each signal has a low impedance return path to the source. The appropriate grounding technique to follow depends on the design application. If the application is for high power, it is recommended to use the partitioning ground scheme. If the application is for low to mid power, the grid ground scheme is generally recommended. The left image shows a grid ground scheme where the ground is common between the digital and power parts of the board. The right image shows a partition ground scheme where the digital or logic ground and the power ground are separated. Note that there is no complete physical separation between the two grounds. The two grounds are connected at a single point, which is indicated by the orange lines in the image. Aside from choosing the appropriate ground scheme, there are other general grounding techniques that should be followed when designing a PCB layout. It is strongly recommended to have a continuous ground plane. If the PCB is four layers or more, have one layer dedicated as a ground plane to ensure the signals have the shortest return path to the power source. If the PCB is two layers or less, make sure that the amount of ground copper on each layer is maximized and continuous. Route the signals and place the components such that their ground area is maximized and that there are no areas of ground copper that is physically separated from the rest of the ground. Also, ensure that the ground plane discontinuity is minimized. This can be achieved by carefully routing the traces, reducing the amount of vias when possible, placing vias away from each other, and placing the components such that the ground plane is continuous throughout the board. In the real world applications, motor drivers are not ideal devices, and much of its internal energy is converted to heat. This heat must be effectively dealt with before damage occurs to the driver or any surrounding components. Proper PCB layout can help disperse the heat and keep the motor driver at the recommended temperature. To better understand how to effectively disperse the heat from the driver, it is important to understand the paths that the heat travels from the driver. The top right image shows different paths that the heat takes from the driver. The paths are represented by the red arrows. The larger the arrow, the more heat that, that travels through that path. As can be seen in the image, most of the heat travels down from the thermal pad of the IC and spreads out through the internal and external layers of the board. Some heat travels from the bonding wires and through the leads to the top layer traces. Another portion of the heat is, is dissipated to the open air outside of the PCB. To ensure that the heat spreads evenly throughout the PCB and is not concentrated near the driver, here are some layout techniques to follow. 
If the IC has a thermal pad, make sure that the top layer copper pour from the thermal pad to the grounding planes are continuous. The middle right images show the impact of, on thermal performance of a continuous pour versus a discontinuous pour. When the pour is cut off by a trace, heat is concentrated near the IC, which results in higher temperatures. On the other hand, when the pour is continuous, the heat can easily flow through both sides of the device and reduce the temperature near the IC. Another technique to improve thermal dissipation is to use 1.5 ounce or 2 ounce copper pour or plating thickness. Increasing the plating thickness reduces the effective thermal resistance, which increases the thermal conductivity of the copper. Another technique is to use direct connect thermal vias instead of thermal relief vias. The bottom right image shows a side by side comparison of the thermal performance of direct connect and thermal, and thermal relief vias. The direct connect vias allow for the lowest possible thermal resistance between the via and copper layers, which helps achieve lower temperatures. Lastly, it is recommended to use a minimum 8 mil hole size by 20 mil diameter size thermal vias directly beneath the thermal pad for optimal heat conductivity. Group the thermal vias into arrays near the regions of high heat concentrations, such as the thermal pad and regions near the IC. Vias are an essential component in any layout design. There are many types of vias, but in this presentation, we'll be focusing on the typical through-hole vias, since those are the most common vias used in motor driver PCB designs. Here are some general layout guidelines to follow when using vias. Make sure the vias have a solid exposed copper area instead of a spoke or web exposed copper area. The image labeled as one shows the two via types. Solid vias have a more continuous exposed copper area, allowing the via to conduct the current more efficiently. Make sure to select the appropriate via size and quantity for the appropriate current capacity needs. The table labeled as two show the current capacity for different hole diameter sizes. The via diameter size should be at least the same size as a trace width. The via diameter size or the number of vias for a given trace should be increased to allow more current to flow to the other layer. If a power or ground plane needs to be connected to another layer, make sure to use multi vias or via stitching. Multi vias and via stitching are useful for low parasitic grounding and high current connections. Image 3 shows an example of multi vias. Lastly, don't place vias too close to each other. Image 4 show an example of good and bad spacing between vias. Having vias with good separation allows for the plane to be more continuous and for the signal path to be shortened. This slide presents a few important routing techniques to follow when designing a motor driver PCB layout. The first technique is to make sure the gate drive traces are as wide and as short as possible. The recommendation is to start with a trace width of 20 mils for at least 1.5 ounce copper plating thickness and increase the width for higher currents. For gate drivers, route the signal trace of the high side gate and the switch node trace as close as possible to minimize inductance, loop area, and noise caused by fast changes in voltage induced by switching. For motor drivers with integrated FETs, this routing is optimized internally. Do not use right angle traces as it can cause electromagnetic interference issues. The image label as one shows examples of different trace angles and ranks them from best to worst. When possible, always use the teardrop technique when transitioning from vias to pads or from a thin to a thick trace. Using teardrop reduces the thermal stress of the signal transition. Image label as two shows an example of a teardrop. Route traces and parallel pairs, otherwise known as differential pairs, when routing around an object. For example, when routing the signals from the current sense amplifiers, make sure that the traces stay as close together as possible to avoid any differential impedance and, dis and discontinuity caused by split traces. Image three shows a good and a bad parallel pair routing example.
A last general routing technique is to have a separate grounding for analog and digital parts of the circuit to reduce ground noise. Image 4 shows an illustration of a right and wrong grounding topology. Bulk and bypass capacitors are important components in a motor driver design. Bulk capacitors help reduce the low frequency current transients and stores charge to supply large currents required by the motor system. Bypass capacitors are used to minimize high frequency noise into the supply pin of the motor driver. This slide will show a few guidelines to follow for selecting and placing the various bulk and bypass capacitors typically used in a motor driver circuit. Place all bulk capacitors near the power entry point of the board. This will ensure that the low frequency transients are suppressed before it travels further into the PCB. When selecting the bulk capacitance, always consider the highest current required by the motor system, supply voltage ripple, any type of motor. For drivers that have integrated charge pumps, place the charge pump capacitors or bootstrap capacitors as close to the driver as possible. This will ensure that the trace inductance impedance between the capacitors and the charge pump pins on the driver is minimized. High trace inductance impedance can cause unwanted oscillations that can affect the performance of the charge pump. Make sure the local bypass capacitors are on the same layer as the driver IC and are close to the driver. This is to ensure that the signal traces between the bypass capacitors and the IC are on the same layer without the need to use vias which can increase the inductance and the trace. Image 1 show a schematic of where local bulk and bypass capacitors should be located. Note that the capacitor of lower value is placed closer to the IC. Avoid placing vias between the bypass capacitor and the driver. Vias will increase the inductance in the high current loop, which is not ideal. Image 2 shows an example of good and bad bypassing. In the power stage, use small ceramic capacitors to attenuate high frequency transients that occur when the edge bridge is switching. Image 3 shows a schematic of the power stage and where the capacitor should be placed. Make sure to minimize the high frequency loops as much as possible. If the device has integrated current sensing amplifiers, place filtering capacitors near the sensing pins to filter out noise from the signal. A capacitor of around 1 nanofarad is recommended. For devices with voltage regulators, Small ceramic capacitors should be placed near the regulator output. Always make sure to minimize the ground return loop to the ground pin of the device. Placement and PCB layout of the power MOSFETs is very important, especially for gate drivers to ensure correct functionality and the motor driver system. For devices with integrated MOSFETs, the layout and placement is optimized internally. This slide will show a few basic layout examples based on common motor driver architectures. The most important guideline to follow is to place the MOSFETs in such a way that the area of the high frequency loops is minimized. Image 1 and 2 show recommended layout examples of half bridge stack and half bridge side by side configuration respectively. The left part of each image shows a layout example of leaded MOSFET packages and the right part show a layout example of non-leaded MOSFET packages. Note that in both examples, the MOSFETs are placed very close to each other to reduce the high current loop area and parasitic trace inductances. The parasitic inductances in the power stage should be minimized to reduce switch node ringing oscillations. Switch node ringing is the LC oscillation that occur on the switched node, which is the node where the motor terminal is connected to. These oscillations are undesirable and it can cause high EMI noise and create overshoot and undershoot voltages which can violate absolute maximum ratings of the MOSFET. Image 3 shows common parasitics like the inductance and the drain and source traces found in a half bridge. The best way to minimize switch node ringing is by careful PCB layout. Use external measures such as reducing slew rate or including external RCS numbers to minimize switch nor ringing when needed. The slew rate can be reduced by placing a resistor in the MOSFET gate or by using Texas Instruments smart gate drive technology that allows for easy adjustment of the slew rate. Another solution to minimize switch nor ringing 
is by placing a snubber circuit between the drain and the source of each MOSFET, which can help filter out the undesirable oscillations. As mentioned previously, it is strongly recommended to optimize the PCB layout for reducing the high current loop path. The high current loop in the power stage is shown by the red path in image 4. This loop path can be minimized by using wide and short traces and reducing the number of layer jumps in the loop. Thank you for viewing this installment of the Texas Instruments Precision Lab series on motor drivers. To learn more about the topics covered in this training video, read the best practices for board layout of motor drivers application report that is listed in the resources slide of this presentation. Also, to learn more about motor driver technical resources and browse Texas Instruments catalog of motor driver products, please visit the motor driver page on ti.com.